Now I would like to invite Professor Rehan Suri, Advisor Training and Placement, Maulana Azad National Urdu University, to brief us about this conference. <coughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Sadr Jalsa, Ali Janab, Mahatram, Dr. Muhammad Aslam Parvez Sahab, Vice Chancellor of the University. Mehmane Khususi, Mahatram Janab, C.E. Kindo Sahab, Executive Director, National Mineral Development Corporation. Mehmane Zazi, Sachin Khandelwal Sahab, CEO, Magma Housing Finance Corporation. Keynote speaker, Mr. Krishna Kishore, Vertical Head of TCS. Professor Saneem Fatma Sahiba, Organizing Secretary of the Conference. Members of Advisory Committee and Organizing Committee of the Conference. Deans of Schools, Heads of Departments, Guests from Industry, Media and Academia. My colleagues and the future of the country, young budding professionals come students a very good morning. I welcome you all to this conference. It is indeed my pleasure and privilege to describe the theme of the conference. As we all know, the theme of the conference, Industry Institute Linkages, Rekindle Youth, Rekindle Youth, Innovation and Employability which is the most relevant issue to deliberate upon and come out with some recommendations to be implemented and fulfill the burgeoning need of the hour, as we all aware that India will become the youngest country of the world by 2020, which will carry the largest po young population under the age of 25. India will also have the world's second largest higher education students, but we have lower employment average, which is less than 41% of the global average. As we all feel that academia and industry together can overcome this situation and develop more employable and knowledgeable citizens of this country. That's why this conference is being organized. We have few objectives of the conference to provide a forum to discuss challenges and the strategies related to industry institute linkages for achieving desired outcome, to deliberate the significance of enhancing academia industry linkages for augmenting research, innovation, employability, and entrepreneurship, to enhance and strengthen avenues for training and placements of the students. Today's conference has four sessions, including two technical sessions with the sub-themes, industry perspective to explore a skill set through academia, second, strategies for industry institute linkages. I trust that luminaries on the dice and of the dice will certainly <laughs> deliberate upon the theme and various aspects of industry academia linkages and fulfill the objects of the conference. I thank all dignitaries on the dais, especially to our Vice Chancellor Sahab. Despite of his, some very important meeting, he took out the time and preside over this function. My special thanks to Mr. C. E. Kindo, who agreed upon on such a short notice uh, to grace this occasion as chief guest. And especially my friend Sachin Khandelwal, we are from the same university, who came all the way from Delhi today, today morning to inaugurate this conference as guest of honor. A special mention of Mr. Krishna Kishore, who especially come from to deliver this keynote addre address from Mumbai yesterday night, and he'll immediately leave after this session to Mumbai. Thank you very much, sir, for this, all, all of you to this conference. And it's my, I thank all of you for making this conference successful by your gracious presence. My special thanks to my team, especially the organizing committee, advising committee, training and placement office. Really, it took really very, as this is our first conference, 
on this topic and especially by the training and placement cell as it is uh, it is again I, I must say we are in the infancy stage so I, I feel I pray I, I wish this conference will deliberate upon and bring with some good solutions and inshallah we will implement upon in the future course of time and thank you very much. शुक्रिया तेरे आने से रोनक तो बड़ी वरना यह महफिल जज्बात अधूरी रहती थैंक यू सो मच सर आई टेक दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी टू इंट्रोड्यूस आर फर्स्ट स्पीकर ऑफ द सेशन मिस्टर कृष्णा किशोर आई विल ट्राई टू रीड हिज ब्रीफ प्रोफाइल दो इट इज नॉट अ ब्रीफ प्रोफाइल वी हैव सम बिग शॉर्ट्स विद अस टुडे वी आर वेरी ऑनर टू हैव यू विद अस टुडे मिस्टर कृष्णा हैड स्टार्ट अ कंसल्टेंट सर्विसेज प्रैक्टिस डिवीजन वर ही इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर प्रोडक्ट डेवलपमेंट डोमेन सपोर्ट फॉर ऑल एजुकेशन स्ट्रेटेजिक प्रोजेक्ट्स product sales and delivery management prior to that mr krishna used to head tata consultancy services healthcare sub practice where he was responsible for domain support for all healthcare projects globally mr krishna is instrumental in bringing new customers to tcs to name a few sigma insurance uh, prudential group insurance prudential real estate dr walkers bullfrog dr kinney's gi specialist mr krishna has over 20 years of experience in core business areas like education healthcare sales and distribution insurance and many more uh, now i humbly request mr krishna kishore vertical head tata consultancy services for keynote address with this couplet hayat leke chalo kainat leke chalo chalo to sare zamane ko saath leke chalo good morning everyone and uh, thanks everyone for this opportunity sir so uh, before i uh, take up the topic uh, let me uh, tell you as a tatas how much importance uh, we give uh, when we interact with different universities let me give the background in the tcs as a company we have a special cell called academic relationship cell so what exactly we do the, how important you know, we give interacting with universities as a company we work with a different companies uh, globally and we encounter in you know, a different situations sometimes we go back to the universities and we take support of the professors we have on uh, this type of technology problem how uh, universities can help so this is how we go back to universities and take the help most important thing when we interact with the students of different universities this is of more interest to the industry because we want to add value to the, all the universities to make sure the students understand they get close to the realities for example let me give the example for example yeah see uh, whenever uh, students of uh, uh, management or commerce you know they take up some topic and uh, they should take advantage and experience of their professor for example if they, if they talk about any topic for example pricing or anything they should make sure that how this concept is used in the real time uh, that's more important than just learning academically for example if you're talking about pricing or uh, marketing and all take support from your professors in real time how this concept is used then you become very strong in your concept this helps you when you attend any of the interview so predominantly what you need to do when your university uh, uh, invites a guest lecturer and all please leverage their experiences with your theoretical concept you have this many subjects and how these concepts are really implemented for example you need to be upfront uh, uh, abreast of the what's happening in the market today you know we talk about uh, different technologies we, we talk about you know different players in the internet area and all so you need to see what is the pricing strategy we're talking about reliance and the new trend is happening so when we talk about the topic called pricing what is the strategy which reliance is applying your professors will be in a position to help you out so basically what i'm saying is companies is self interest to come and interact with the universities so that we share our experiences and we also sometimes give our you know, problems to the professor how you can help us in a technological situation and we also bring the real life scenario what's happening globally so that our students who are the spine of this country when we add value we get a better product to the back to the country and back to the companies so this point is very very important make sure your academics whatever concepts you read let be very very close to the real time world what's happening otherwise 
the moment the marks are important, but it's not everything. You know, you come back to the company with a 95%, but eventually you really don't understand what the, the uh, story behind the concept. So it will take a lot of time for the industry to make you, to, to put in front of the customer. So again, my humble request is, industries work very closely with the uh, universities, and uh, you have to, as a student, the message is, make sure, take experience of the professors and the guest lectures who come, learn the concept and how they are implemented in a uh, real-time scenario. The theoretical should be supported with a situation-based analysis. For every company, take some cases. How the situation has been handled. Then you'll become more strong. Concept automatically will understand. Hope so. I have a four points to cover. So this is where industries will help you. How we each, for example, when I go and take some lecture, I take some cases, real-time cases. These were the cases which you know, we, are, we have faced in Japan, a different country. And we asked students, how this scenario you're going to uh, you know, uh, help us? Sometimes we get a brilliant ideas from the uh, student, which we take back and which we uh, take back to the industry. So this is how the very important point where industry and universities uh, will work together. Sometimes we come with uh, some technology constraint. So we go to the professors of you know, different uh, prestigious universities. We tell them we have a technology constraint. So they spent a lot of time on the research and they come up with, you know, we, were, we had some problems with the cloud computing. So we took some from AAA to Hyderabad. So we do invest on uh, a lot of investment on the universities and we get a good productivity from the research papers, what they submit and all. So this is the one point I would like to say. Your theoretical subject should be very, very close to the reality of the life, what's happening in the market. This is the one thing I would like to incorporate. Second thing, coming back to the message to the youth. See, so when you, as a student of this you know, uh, university, when you want to face, obviously, you know, we all say that, you know, I want to get a good job. See, job is going to be a byproduct if you're very, very confident of what you're doing, okay? So when we interact with the student, there are a couple of qualities which we see. Most important thing, my friend, you have to trust yourself, you're the best. Now, when you want to face something, make sure you're the best. So if you don't trust yourself, how other person can trust you? So make sure you trust yourself, you are the best. Second quality, what you know, we always try to give input. Wherever you go for a campus interview, you plan, you plan it very, very thoroughly. See, sometimes I go for an uh, interview, students come with a very casual attitude. They don't know, for example, if I come as a TCS, they don't know who is the CEO of the TCS, and he's attending the interview. So minimal planning is very, very important. Today, technology is so advanced. If you spend 10 minutes time, you'll get to know everything about TCS. So which is very important, don't walk into the interview without knowing the company's background. See, for example, uh, I was just saying, uh, reading a case study. For example, a, a person gets an interview call from Asian Paints. The student, the way he has planned, he has gone to the Asian Paints you know, shops and he understood what products they sell. So he has done some homework. In the interview, if he said, I know about your company, then the person asks, what homework you have done? If he said that I have gone to your shops and know about the product, that's, that's it. So again, it's an art. So you can drive the interview the way you want if you do a proper planning for that. So this is a something which I would like to give input to the student. You please plan. And the third thing which we, when we go for interview, please exhibit highest level of discipline. Because you, <clears throat> from this, uh, uh, you are from such a decent university, please maintain decency and decorum of the university. Exhibit highest level of discipline, everything. Let me give you one tip. You know, when we go for a campus, it's going to be very important. There is a question which is known to everyone in the interview you're going to ask. But 90% students plunk to answer this question. This is something very openly. As an interviewer, I take first three minutes time to decide whether to take this student or not, depending upon that question. Once I take a decision that I'm not going to take this student, it will be very difficult for you to change my mindset. The simple question is, just you know, a normal question, tell me about yourself. This is something which definitely you're going to ask. Okay, so here you have to take experience of your placement cell. There is a format available because students jump from you know, my hobbies to you know, my family background. There is a format available where you take ex uh, no, expertise from your placement cell, how you need to present. The first three minutes in an interview is going to be very, very important point uh, to decide how you are going to take forward the interview. So these are the three points you know, which I would like to give the message to student, apart from that, you know, obviously, 
I'm sure your uh, placement cell will train you how to face the interviews, what all the, see again, there are around 30 to 40 questions normally you know, for campus recruitment which comes. Apart from that, I'm sure you know, your teachers will train you. So this is the things which is a known that you're going to be asked, so please plan accordingly. Third thing, uh, I'm going to touch upon the innovation. Today we talk about the digitization, you know, that's a buzzword. So uh, let me talk the innovation, what's happening in the education industry. Uh, actually, I, I head the education vertical for uh, TCS. So the tremendous change which we have seen from last five years. So as a TCS, today, uh, TCS conducts most of the high-stake exams in, the, uh, in India. For example, if you take a, a gate exam, okay, for MTech, the online exam is conducted by TCS. If you take most prestigious uh, management exam, CAT exam is conducted by TCS. If you take JE exam, JE mains is conducted by TCS. So uh, for CLAT, uh, for the law, it's conducted by TCS. Now we recently we have one APM set. So slowly what TCS is going to play a role, how come an IT company is getting into education? But, see today you must have seen that you know a lot of scams are happening, paper leakage and all. So we are digitizing the examination means predominantly the paper, pencil, the bubbling, that era is getting over. Slowly things are changing towards an online exam. I'm sure, you know, slowly the trend is changing. Today, recently, uh, the Snaidu government has announced all the CET exams of Andhra Pradesh is going to be on online, on an exam. So things are changing. It adds value to student. Eventually, this digitization should improve the quality of uh, life and quality of students. It should not bring, because again, we should not take the negatives of the digitization. So TCS, what role we are playing? We are playing a very serious role of creating a platform where the real genuine students will get selected so that we get a good quality and it improves the nation. Because Tata's play such an important role today in education building. Today, you know, we talk about any of the crucial exams like APPSE, Telangana Service Commission, TCS conducts the exam. What is that we are, when we conduct this exam, the genuine students are joining back the uh, jobs. So that gives us pride that we are creating an impact to the nation so that the best students, the best employability people get the job. So that there's no scope for leakage, there's no scope for any scams. So this is innovation. One more latest trend, let me uh, tell you what's happening in education industry. We are talking about the online ex exam where the multiple choice. The latest trend is, now we have a descriptive paper, okay. The digital evaluation is something which is you know, going to rule the. Today, you know, most of the universities, you write the paper and uh, we scan it and we digitally evaluate so that there is no scope for uh, you know, uh, uh, counting and all. So this is the trend going on. So where we are going to make them, today you see in IT companies, we develop a code and we, uh, this code is delivered and uh, used companies sitting 20,000 miles in different countries. The next trend, you know what's happening? Students writing exams in different countries, for example, there are very few teachers available in English in Japan. So uh, some exams happening in Japan, they scan the papers and send it to India, and you know, we digitally evaluate and we send back to them. So digital evaluation is going to, so eventually the, the way we foresee for you know, uh, this technology change, we are going to have uh, many professors, the way we have IT employees, will be very busy evaluating the papers because we have uh, people who are skilled to evaluate. That's, a, that's how we see. In 1968, when Mr. Kohli, the father of Indian IT industry, he said, we are going to write the code. People sitting 20,000 miles are going to execute. People laughed at him. See, that's the vision he had. <clears throat> today, that's a reality. So I'm sure you are today, know, our most of the revenue comes with on-site and offshore. So today, again, the way Tata's foresee the education industry, all the professors, all the you know, professors are very, very busy in evaluating and most of the uh, the digital evaluation we get from different countries, that's how we see the future of you know, education vertical as such. So this is the third point. And uh, <clears throat> now, the, this is a very innovation is happening. We're talking about uh, digital campuses, digital evaluation, and uh, digital assessment. So digitization is very strongly penetrating. See, if you don't get equipped, or if you don't catch up the technology, eventually if you still go with the traditional, slowly you'll fade out. Slowly things will fade out. Let me tell you the change, the initial change itself will take some time, but today, <clears throat> students of 10th class, we got an order where, you know, 
It's a sleeper force. No, it's a very sleeper force, but that is going to take exam in online exam. So things are changing. Today, everybody in a position to you know, use a mobile. So it's a more click. So the change is happening on the digitization is happening in the education industry. The fourth thing, <clears throat> the last thing which I'm going to touch base on, the employability. See, first thing we all need to understand, for example, if you're from commerce background or a management background, you need to be very clear what, you know, where I'm going to join, what domain, you need to have the clarity of which company I'm going to attend and where I see after five years. If you don't have a clarity, make sure any guest lectures come, ask them, take support of your professors, understand what opportunities you have. Let me tell you, have you ever, uh, have you ever experienced Tata's go and recruit doctors? We recruit doctors. See, you don't even know what type of uh, opportunities are available for you industry. Let me tell you the simple example. Why we recruit doctors? Because we do a lot of healthcare projects. And when we talk to the doctors of the, for example, Apollo, we do uh, the entire IT of Apollo is managed by Tata's. So when a software engineer go and talk to doctor, we don't understand the language. So we recruit doctor. This doctor who's trained in a little bit of software, go and take the requirements uh, in the proper way. You understand, right? That's how we have uh, experts. Today we have uh, nurses, we have uh, doctors in a software company. The reason I'm giving this example, you should know that IT industry talked about these big companies are not only for BTEC. There are many more opportunities. Only thing is you should explore, my friend. Explore and keep abreast of what's happening. That will be wonderful. Only thing is just make sure you don't lose focus. And this is a very, very important time of your career. And uh, stay abreast of technology. So this is a key note which I would like to uh, share. And uh, next time I'll be more uh, than happy to take any questions. And I'm very happy, again, uh, I request we will come back and again share the format, how the interviews you should face, definitely you know, with uh, permission from the university. Because we feel that you know, it's of our own interest that you know, when you do good, it's good for the country. It's not that you know, you're going to do, we are going to do a favor. So we want youth of this country, you, know, you should be well equipped with what's happening in India, what's happening digitally and all. Thank you very much. And uh, I'll be more than happy to take if you have any questions about uh, education vertical. It's evaluated by women. Uh, it's uh, evaluated by women. Uh, the, it's a descriptive, uh, because we have a two. One is assessment, I say multiple choice, that anybody will know. The descriptive paper, you know, we write a theory, it's a scan. Once we scan the paper, and uh, for example, uh, the same scan paper will be sent to three people, three professors, at the same time. Normally, in a traditional way, I uh, evaluate, it goes to. So what happens when we scan and send? A professor reads it, and he gives a mark. It's just a punch the mark. Then if there is a discrepancy of you know, five, it's like a business rule. So eventually you scan it and we have a developed a software called digital evaluation software. We, we upload the paper and we ask professors, we train them how to evaluate the uh, descriptive answers. Thank you. Okay. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much for all your time. Thank you, sir. And uh, I wish you all the best and thanks for giving this opportunity to talk. Thank you very much.